Welcome to another of our Short Hints sessions as part of our Guiding Schools Towards World Class Education series. Today we're proud to have Sandra Teacher who is going to talk about the importance of spiritual, moral, social and cultural development in helping young people uh, to excel in all areas of the curriculum. Sandra has had the privilege of evaluating the impact of SMSC in many schools uh, as a school improvement partner, as an Ofsted inspector, and as a uh, government advisor. So it's great to have you here today with us, Sandra. Thank you. Um, Thank you for inviting me. Ah, absolute pleasure. Um, so what is it that makes SMSC such a crucial part of the curriculum? Well, SMSC is, I would say, is essential for children and young people for their individual development, not only for themselves, but for society as a whole. Yeah. So, it's at the heart of every school and every teacher would say it's at the heart of every education system. So thinking about SMSC, it's what I would call the DNA. It's the whole culture and ethos that revolves and is integrated around school life. Mm. Uh, and it's something that uh, schools really have been doing since the beginning of time. It's intrinsic to the life of the school. And it's something that revolves around every single subject and every single activity and area of school work. Mm. And, and it's probably even more important now with the COVID-19 pandemic, looking after the well-being, which is to a certain extent what you're talking about, of, the, of all the pupils, all the children in school. So it becomes, I think, it perhaps even more important. I mean, absolutely. It's always been there at the heart, but I think yeah. now the reason that I'm so passionate about it and want to tell everyone about it is because it should be the highlight of everything that you're doing in school. It should be on the surface of every activity, every lesson, every area of learning. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So do you want to maybe go into more detail about the, the four elements that we're talking about today? So maybe start with the spiritual one. Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of people are put off by the word spiritual development mm. because they think that it only possibly relates to religious education. And of course, there is a lot of spirituality within faith or not or none. There are all faiths and none. And now particularly we're talking about worldviews. And I think spiritual development is something that's intrinsic to all of us, to all human mm. beings. And in terms of what schools should be thinking about, they should actually be thinking about how to raise the potential of young people, how to raise their confidence and self-esteem. That's spiritual development helping young people to achieve their potential, to extend their boundaries, as well as helping them climb mountains, look at sunsets and have awe and wonder in the beauty of nature. Mm. So that's spiritual development. And the awe and wonder is, is a nice way of putting it, isn't it really? Yes, because it's an old fashioned word, people don't it use it. It is a bit old fashioned, but I think it, it really um, embraces the extent of it, because as you say, if you climb a mountain, you get to the top, it's a massive spiritual experience, but it's got nothing to do necessarily with religion. So, Absolutely, yeah. and it's about, we might call, what's the wow factor in education? Yeah, shouldn't, shouldn't children have the opportunity to have the wow factor in everything that they do? Yeah, yeah. So that's spiritual development. Then we move on to moral, which is, again, at the first level, it would be about, obviously, knowing about rules and regulations, knowing about behaviour, but there's so much more involved in moral development. And again, so many, how do schools tackle issues around uh, issues of morality, thinking about, for example, all, sadly, all the conflicts that there are, when is it ever right to kill somebody, mm. you know, to giving the young people opportunities if you're in the army, uh, would that be a moral situation if you were a child of an army officer, for example, or even now there's enormous moral issues around COVID. Is it moral not to wear a mask uh, if you should be um, or keeping your distance because you, you might feel comfortable about it? But what about all the people around you? So, so many different issues, giving the young people opportunities to look at these dilemmas and to enable them to open their minds to be able to understand about all of these things, even from early years, even from the youngest of ages. I always tell the story about in early years when people love the story of Goldilocks and the three bears. Mm. And of course, think about the moral, the moral issues that are in there and how naughty Goldilocks was because she went on her own to the forest and she took the bears porridge and things like that. So it's, it's, it's all around us, absolutely. So it's, it's like focusing on trying to ensure that the, the, the young people that you're working with have a positive impact on society rather than a negative one. Because obviously 
you know, a lot of us have a positive impact, but we also there's quite a lot of um, students, young people going through school that end up giving, having a, a negative impact. And it's that moral side then becomes crucially important for them to, to make a decision to go on a negative route rather than a positive route. And it's vital because it's linked to critical thinking skills, mm. because how do you start decide where your moral compass is? And if, if I asked you or you asked me, we might have different moral compasses and different levels. So it's enabling young people to find out what's comfortable for them. And, and, and that then means you've got to know the, the, the young person really well. Absolutely. So getting to know them um, become, you know, becomes a really important part of education. Well, that's um, very important because we all know that everyone needs um, some sort of attachment in order to be able to define their educational skills. And everyone needs to have a stable adult or stable caring person that they're working towards. And in many instances, schools can provide that for young people where they might not have them outside of school. Absolutely, absolutely. So how does that differ from the social one? What, what, so uh, yeah, the social is very different. I mean, obviously, again, at the basic level, it's about relationships, getting on with your peers. Um, but it's much more than that, because social development also involves independence, understanding about yourself, understanding about how to learn, that's social development, and enabling young people to do research to find out things for themselves. And my philosophy of education is teaching young people to learn how to learn. Um, so that it's not so much about finding out information, but knowing where to, to access that information. Having a, a general body of knowledge, obviously one would always need that, but at the higher level to be able to learn how to learn. Absolutely, and it's something we, we, we talk about a lot. And we, we might wrap it around something like learner-centered education, but the, the, the real bonus is that um, you're trying to get the, the young person to talk about their learning and to analyze how well they're doing uh, against whatever criteria. Absolutely, and that would be social development. I would absolutely be so impressed if a school were thinking about that and making sure that when I talk about measuring the impact, that's how you would know. Yeah. It's a young person's yeah. voice that's vital. So self-assessment uh, becomes crucial. Fear absolutely. assessment is another crucial element of that. Uh, and also thinking, being um, altruistic and thinking about others less fortunate than yourself. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, a lot of schools do work with supporting other charities, but getting children much more involved in that and learning and understanding about people less fortunate than themselves and how they can help and support them. That's all mm -hmm. social development. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And as we talk through it, we can see how how central all of this is to educating young people, isn't it? So I don't think anyone could would deny that. As I said, it's at the DNA, it's at the heart. Uh, and if we move on to cultural development, yes, yes. Um, again, I look at that in certain different pathways. The first and most important thing is about the young person having an identity and knowing where they come from, knowing their own culture. And many schools don't always take the opportunity to explore individual cultures from the range of students. Context is all, as we know now within schools, mm. um, thinking about what the context of the school is. And so cultural development is ensuring that every young person in that setting knows and understands where they come from and what their roots are, so that then they can celebrate that and be proud of that. It links so obviously clearly to the, the you know the Black Lives Matters and all the everything that's going on in the world today. Because if you don't know where you come from, then how can you know where you want to go? So, so thinking about your own culture, but then of course we come to the next level, and that's about having understanding about cultures of other people and that diversity of, if you're strong in your own culture, you can accept and respect other people's cultures and ideas and learning about different minority ethnic groups. And so understanding about that, particularly within the school, but also not only within your school, but further afield. So that would be important. But another level of cultural development is also the culture of disability. And a lot of people forget about that because that could be a, a whole new world for young people to learn and understand about, to have empathy with people with special needs who have any kind of special needs, for other young people who might have any kind of challenges, uh, and to know and understand how to deal with that. Uh, and that's also about cultural development. So it has many different circles, cultural development, uh, and it's not just possibly learning about other faiths, uh, minority ethnic groups. It's a much, much wider and very exciting I think topic. 
Because whatever subject you're learning about, I can assure you there's something there that will provide cultural development. Mm -hmm. So one of the terms, staying on the culture side, one of the terms that's being banded around a lot at the moment is cultural capital. Um, <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we, may not just, we may not agree on the definition of cultural capital, but what, what's your take on that? Well, it, it's uh, an Ofsted term, if you like, something that they've done a lot of research on. Uh, and um, it's about giving young people experiences of things that they wouldn't have and had previously. So I think in a nutshell, a very simple basic nutshell, is thinking when we've, to a young person, does the school give them the opportunity to meet somebody of a different faith or a different belief that they wouldn't have had before? Uh, does it give them the opportunity to go to the seaside when they've never done that before? So go to the concerts, go to the theatre, thinking about things like that within the context again of the school. So trying to give young people the opportunity to experience things that possibly within the lifestyle that they and their family lead that they wouldn't have before. Mm -hmm because we want to give them the opportunity to scale to scale the ladder it's for their future development mm -hmm. and and we all know that particularly in the world that we live we have to be able to scale that ladder and we have to know the protocols yeah, absolutely so so probably what we what you're talking about there is that each young person brings with them some cultural capital that's right which is essential because that's their that's the starting point experiences and that's their start point and it's about the school understanding what that is um, and then maybe um, using that as a start point for building the cultural capital from experiences that they've not had so far Absolutely. So a lot of that can be done in school um, rather than having to go to uh, visit different places, although that's really... But now we can do it virtually, can't we? <laughs> well, and now we can do it virtually, obviously, yeah. So I think that's... Um, the, the, the role of the school, then, is really about building on the social, the cultural capital that the children bring with them, and then building on that by using whatever resources they've got in school and outside of school. And that's in a way coming back to the, what I was explaining about young people with special needs, the culture. It's important for children who possibly haven't got those needs to understand and experience about what it's like for somebody who has. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Sandra, that's a, you know, these are short hints. We could talk about this all day. You know, as, as we all should be. Um, so I really thank you for your, for your time. Thank and, you. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure we're all taking something more away with us today after listening to what you've had to say. So thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. Keep safe and well. And, and you too. Bye bye. Okay.